It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Oh, Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Day 11. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. Here's my good word for today. It's about a honey of a new cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. And it's my hunch you'll like it just as much as we do out here at the Double R Bar Ranch. You see, Post Sugar Crisp is just downright good eating. And it's good so many different ways. Try it real soon, won't you? Now, our story for tonight is about the greatest horse in the world, Trigger. It is late afternoon in Mineral City. Day Levens and Pat Brady are holding down a deserted fort in the Eureka Cafe as Roy Rogers and Trigger and Bullet come down the main street and stop at the hitching rail outside. Look, Pat, Roy just holds his hand up and Trigger stands perfectly still at the hitching rail. Yeah, Trigger's quite a horse. Of course, now with Nellie Bell, I just stop the motor and she stays where I'll leave her. Yeah, and sometimes you don't even have to stop her motor. It stops by itself. Well, howdy, Dale. Hi, Pat. Hi, Roy. You got in town early today. Glad to see you, Roy. Business is pretty slow. Well, if you want to rustle me up a sandwich, the rush is on. Hi there, Bullet. There wasn't much to do around the double R bar today, either. I've been putting Trigger and Bullet through their paces. You certainly spend a lot of time training those animals, Roy. Well, they have to be kept on their toes, Dale. Both Trigger and Bullet learn things mighty quickly, and the more you work with animals, the more they catch on to sort of thinking for themselves. You know, that's the nice thing about a Jeep. You don't have to teach it anything, and you don't have to worry about it thinking. <laughs> I've been working on hand signals with Trigger. You know how he comes to me at one whistle and goes away at two and kicks out his heels at three? Yes. Well, I've been teaching him to do the same thing on one, two, and three waves of the hand. Well, did you teach Bullet anything new? Mm, nothing in particular. We sort of reviewed the commands he knows. Uh, bark, Bullet. Now, I'll growl, Bullet. <laughs> Grab Roy's gun wrist, Bullet. <laughs> bullet doesn't do that on anyone's command but mine. And I don't ask him to do it unless it's absolutely necessary, Pat. Well, didn't you teach him anything new, Roy? Well, come to think of it, I did. Uh, say, get me a pound of hamburger and I'll show you. Okay. Shucks, when I was a kid in Twistin' Bronc Falls, I... I had a little terrier-type poodle shepherd that could carry a package of pork chops home from the meat market and never even touch them. Now, is that what you taught, Bullet? Well, not exactly, Pat. You just watch. Here you are, Roy. The Eureka Cafe's special ground round. All right. Thanks, Dale. Bullet learned this trick in no time at all. You see this hamburger, Bullet? <laughs> all right. I'm going to put the plate down on the floor. Now, Bullet, eat it. Well, Roy Rogers, of all the ridiculous things I ever saw, that will cost you exactly one dollar. <laughs> all right. You said things were slow, so I thought I'd drum up some business for you. Wow, I never saw a bigger moving van. Yeah, it's one of those transcontinental jobs, I guess. Z. Carney, we haul anything, anywhere. Those are a couple of big men. I hope their appetites go with their size. The truck's pretty well loaded down. There's so much furniture on it, they can't even get the tailgate closed. I take it this is the leading eating establishment in this town? Well, it's practically the only one, but it's a mighty good one. All right, we'll take a chance. Bring us anything you got, just so it's the best in the house. Hey, that dog doesn't bite, does he? 
Only if you happen to be a pound of hamburger. <laughs> well, a couple of nice steaks and some home fried potatoes and salad suit you? Why, uh, sure. I make mine medium rare and my partner's medium well. Fine. Give them some silverware and water, Pat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Why don't you sit down, Hank? A dog. Wouldn't hurt anyone, would he? Oh, of course not. He wouldn't hurt a flea. Of course, he hasn't got any to hurt. <laughs> That's a pretty good one, cowboy. <laughs> Come on, Hank. The dog won't hurt you. Well, all right. Just don't like to take a chance. I'll put him outside if he bothers you. Come on, Bullet. You keep trigger company. Hey, you fellas are a couple of long-distance movers, aren't you? That's right. That's our game. We were just driving through town. We saw that good-looking horse out in front and decided we were hungry. In fact, we we're kind of sleepy, and if there's a hotel in town, we might rest up until later tonight. Uh, who's that horse belong to? It's my horse. What's he got to do with it? Oh, nothing. He's just a magnificent animal, that's all. He attracted our attention to this establishment. Uh, by the way, I don't think I caught your name. It's Roy Rogers, and the fellow who still hasn't gotten your silver is Pat Brady. Well, I'm glad to know both of you. I'm Ziggy Carney. My talkative partner here is Hank Yeagley. Howdy. Glad to know you. Yeah, sure are. If we ever decide to move, we'll get in touch with you. Say, those are a couple of fancy-looking guns you're packing, Mr. Carney. Yes, sir, it's mighty flashy artillery. When I handle them, they're flashier yet. You never know what you'll run into on a long trip, you know. Ziggy's a trick shot. That's right, I'm one of the best in the world, if I do say so myself. But I don't imagine you two are interested. Oh, sure we are. But I'll bet there's a certain fella right in this town who could shoot rings around you. I'll cut it out, Pat. Oh, is that so? Brady, I bet I could show you a feat of fancy marksmanship that you've never seen before. You could? What is it? I'll bet I could shoot a bullet in one of your ears and have it come out the other without touching a thing. Why, anybody could do that. Now, just a cotton-picking minute. Hey, Pat, if my sandwich uh, and these fellas' steaks are ready, this might be a good place to quit discussing guns. Yeah, maybe you're right, Roy. If I got mad at those two fellas, I'd sure feel sorry for them. <laughs> Your friend can't take a joke, huh, Rogers? Let's just forget the whole thing. Oh, Roy. Uh, howdy, Sheriff. Say, what are you looking so glum about? I've got reasons. If I were you, I wouldn't leave Trigger standing outside without tying him to the hitching rail. Trigger wouldn't budge from there unless I gave him the word. Yeah, but there's horse thieves in the neighborhood. A valuable Arabian was stolen in Hollow Wells late last night. No fooling, Sheriff. Well, whose horse was he? Mine. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> it just struck me funny. An officer of the law having his horse stolen. <laughs> There's nothing funny about it. Say, weren't you two fellas in the gold mine cafe in Hollow Wells last night? Sure we were. What of it? Maybe you know something about my horse. Now, let's not be silly, Sheriff. We're a couple of long-distance moving men. Hollow Wells is only about 15 miles from here, Carney. If you were there last night, it certainly took you a long time to get to Mineral City. We passed through Hollow Wells going another way. We had a load for Frisco. We delivered it, picked up another, and headed south again. Not that it's any of your business. I suppose not. Thanks for the explanation. Just the same, you left that cafe before I did, and when I came out, my horse was gone. I guess you wouldn't mind if I searched that moving van of yours. Go ahead. Only get yourself a warrant first. When you come back, you better bring a couple of strong deputies, because Hank and I ain't going to take that furniture out and put it back again for any hick town cop. Come to think about it, your truck was loaded clear full last night. I guess you didn't steal my horse after all. That's more like it, eh, Ziggy? Why, sure. If we was horse thieves, we'd have better taste than to steal anything a small-town sheriff would ride. We'd grab something like that horse or Rogers. Sheriff, if you want to get your car, I'd be glad to go to Hollow Wells with you and look for evidence. And that's what I was going to ask you to do, Roy. It was too dark to look for tracks last night, and I've been so busy all day I haven't had a chance to go back. But maybe we can still find something. Good. I'm going to eat a sandwich if Pat ever gets around to bringing it in, and I'll leave Trigger in the old barn behind the cafe for the night. Suppose you pick me up here in about 20 minutes. Good enough, Roy. Be seeing you. Happy hunting, Sherlock. You two fellas watch it. Hey, 
Okay, here's your sandwich, Roy. Your steaks will be coming up in a minute, fellas. Well, if it takes as long to find a room, we won't get any sleep till Christmas. When they thought up the word waiter, they had your customers in mind. Did you hear what the sheriff was saying, Pat? Yeah, I heard him. And I think his first hunch was right. I think these two fellers probably stole his horse. Now, wait a minute. If that remark had come from a different source, I'd consider it an insult. Suppose I called you a horse thief. You just try it, Rogers. You'll see how fast a real artist can draw a pair of guns. That's something I'd like to see. So, uh, I think you're a horse thief. Look out, Roy. He's drawing. He's not the only one. Hey, hey. What do you mean by firing at me? I wasn't firing at you, Carney. I was just aiming at those fancy 45s of yours. Yeah, and he hit them, too. Knocked them right out of your hands. Hey, what's going on out here? Oh, nothing, Dale. Carney was going to show me what a fancy shot he is, but he changed his mind. I never saw anyone outdraw you before, Ziggy. No one ever has before, and no one will ever do it again. Rogers, if you wasn't headed for Hollow Wells, and if I wasn't a peace-loving man, I'd get revenge on you. <laughs> Well, this adventure's mighty exciting, hey, listeners? And here's something every bit as exciting. The new Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, pop-out trading cards. Offered you by Post Serials, free of extra cost. There are 36 different pictures in this wonderful series. Real-life pictures of Roy, Dale, Trigger, Bullet, and Pat in exciting action. And here's why these cards are so extra special. You see, the main part of each picture pops right out. Easy as you please. You have lifelike two-dimensional figures that stand up by themselves. Great for decorating your room or club headquarters. And don't forget, you send no box tops, no money. These Roy Rogers cards are free of extra cost. At your grocers, just look for the trading card packages of these famous Post cereals. Crinkles, Raisin Bran, Grape Nuts Flakes, Bran Flakes, Sugar Crisp, and Post Toasties. Each package brings you one of these wonderful cards. Imagine the terrific display you'll have with all 36. So hurry. Be the first in your gang to get your Roy Rogers King of the Cowboys pop-out trading cards. Get a good supply of your favorite post cereals tomorrow and start collecting and swapping your Roy Rogers cards right away. <laughs> Ziggy Carney, a disagreeable braggart who claims to be a transcontinental moving van operator, shows a strong interest in Trigger. The sheriff reports that his own horse has been stolen, and although Carney's alibi satisfies the lawman, Roy Rogers has some doubt. Now in Hollow Wells, Roy and the sheriff are going over the ground where the sheriff's horse disappeared. Uh, but Roy, how are we going to know whether the tire marks around here are the marks from Ziggy's truck? Well, I took a good look at the tires and the tracks they left in Mineral City before we drove over here. Gee, I never would have thought of that. You know the hoof marks of your own horse, don't you? Oh, sure. I always have his shoes made with the imprint of a star in the toe plates. I figure he's the sheriff's horse. And... <laughs> Sheriff, you're quite a fella. <laughs> now, you look for those star prints, and I'll see if I can find the marks of Ziggy's tires among these others. There ain't been many horses back here. What the word don't seem to have been shot at all. Oh, keep looking, Sheriff. Hey, here. Here are the tire prints we're looking for. Ziggy's truck was parked here all right. By golly, Roy. Here's the marks of my horse's shoes. All right. Look closely now. Let's see. You're 12 feet away from me, and if Ziggy loaded your horse on his truck, the track should lead over towards these tire marks. No, they seem to come from the hitching rail right to this point. And there are no marks of any kind where they stop and disappear. Well, that's strange. Uh, guess we're howling up the wrong cottonwood, Roy. If they loaded the horse on that moving van, they, they would have to load them from the back. Hey, let me take a look at those prints, Sheriff. Uh, here they are, Roy. Mm -hmm. Just plain hoof prints. Well, I shouldn't have said just plain because they got my private star in them. Uh, but but you see how they lead up to here and don't go any farther? Let's see. From the direction they're coming, the horse would have been walking parallel to the side of the moving van. Look here, Sheriff. There is another mark. Sure, but that ain't nothing. 
Looks like somebody had a two-by-four about four feet long right on the ground. Well, that could be the mark of the ramp, Lord, from the side of the truck. I'm convinced now that Ziggy and his partner stole your horse, Sheriff, and I think I know just how they did it. Huh? Well, they have a compartment built at the front of the van, right behind the driver's cab. One of the side panels must be hinged so they can lower it and it forms a ramp. Well, Jiminy Ned, Roy. Then all we got to do is get back and confiscate their truck and take my horse off it. Well, it won't be that easy, Sheriff. They've undoubtedly disposed of your horse by this time, and we might dismantle the whole truck without finding the secret switch uh, they used to lower the panel. Well, we can't make a case against them without evidence. And I aim to get that evidence. That's why I left Trigger in the barn behind the Eureka Cafe, and that's why I let Ziggy and his partner know exactly where he was. Now, let's get back to Mineral City, and we'll see what happens when it gets dark. How long are we going to lie up here in this darn hayloft, Roy? Until Ziggy or Hank comes to steal Trigger. It's ten o'clock. I think we can expect visitors any time. Roy, this ain't going to work. If Ziggy tries to take Trigger, Trigger won't go with him. You know nobody, but you can ride Trigger. Trigger will let somebody lead him off if I tell him it's okay. Well, sure, but if Ziggy tries it and you tell Trigger it's okay, then Ziggy will know we're here. Hand signals, Pat, like we were talking about this afternoon. There's enough light so Trigger can see us up here. Look, he isn't taking his eyes off of us. Shh, Roy. Someone's coming in. Yeah. It's Ziggy, all right. Yeah, and the other muzzler's probably waiting in the truck for a getaway. Oh, whoa there, whoa there. Take it easy, you. Roy, he's untying the halter. He sure is. All right, come on with me now, horse. I like your golden color. And if I don't get more gold out of you than the last six horses I swipe put together, my name ain't Ziggy Carney. Did you hear that, Roy? Ziggy's a horse thief, all right. And in a little while... He isn't going to be so proud of it. Come on. Come on, you. Don't pull back. Roy, Trigger won't go with him. He will when I give him the signal. I'll wave my hand twice. There. There. That's more like it. You're a fine horse. All right, just across the alley and into the truck now. (laughs) Rogers will never see you again. Roy, we got him red-handed. Let's take him. Climb out of here quietly, Pat. We'll follow him. Hurry. The truck's parked around the corner of the building. I want to watch how he lowers the ramp. Gee, I hope I don't slip off this darn little ladder. You wouldn't have far to fall. And be quiet. You better both be what? quiet. Huh? Because if you don't, these guns will soon shut you up. Hey, Ziggy's partner. You bet. So you got back from Hollowell's early, eh, Rogers? Yeah, it looks like I did. Thought you'd watch Ziggy put your horse in a moving van, huh? That's something you'll never see. We've got a pretty good idea how he does it. Nobody will ever get any evidence on us. Yeah, we got it. We saw Ziggy lead Trigger out of here. There. Ziggy's ready to pull out, so I'll quit waiting and pull my triggers. Hank, I'd be careful if I were you. Something you're mighty scared of is standing right behind you. I ain't scared of nothing. Not even my big dog, huh? Yeah, you can't bluff me into turning around. Your dog ain't there. Maybe you'll believe it when you hear him. Growl, Bullet. Hey, where is he? Grab his gun, wrist. Get him off me. I'll fill him full of luck. Oh, no, you won't. Ah! Because I've got your other wrist. Ah! Drop that gun. Yeah. There. Drop that other one. That dog's killing me. Drop the gun, then. Oh. All right, off of him, Bullet. Let go, boy. Oh, oh man, Roy. Bullet wandered right out here just in the nick of... T- hey, Ziggy's driving away with the truck. Roy, Roy, what's happening? Come here quick, Dale. Bullet insisted on getting out the back door, and then I heard well, shots. I didn't hit anything. Dale, grab those two guns and take this man to the sheriff's office right away. No, Bullet, you stay here and help Dale. Let's run for Nellie Bell, Pat. Trigger's in the hands of a horse thief and a mighty desperate one. We'll return to Roy in a moment. But first, let's listen to the three Sugar Crisp Bears. We're the Sugar Crisp Bears and we want you to meet the grandest treat you ever did eat. Post Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Those three Sugar Crisp Bears really know a good thing when they taste it. Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. 
That's why it's fast getting to be America's favorite cereal. You see, Sugar Crisp is already sweetened with honey and sugar, so you'll just eat it with milk or cream. And it's so handy for snacks anytime you feel like sitting down to some good nourishing eating. Or eat it just like candy. Get genuine Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on it. It's a honey of a new cereal. Roy and Pat are stopped momentarily by the guns of Ziggy Carney's henchmen. But as Bullet helps them to escape blazing lead, Carney escapes with Trigger in his huge truck. Pat and Roy give chase in Nellie Bell. Wow! Hang on to your hat, Roy. Now, this is more like it. Now we're gaining. Hey, we're catching the truck, all right. Uh, what are you going to do, Roy? Shoot out his tires? No, I can't risk having Ziggy lose control of the truck. Not with Trigger in it. We've got to take a long chance, Pat. Ziggy's never seen Nellie Bell, has he? No, Nellie Bell was parked inside all day. All right. After you pass him, hog the middle of the road and slow up. Yeah, but he'll certainly recognize you if he don't recognize me. No, he won't, because I won't be in Nellie Bell. What? I want you to swing in close to the side of Carney's truck as you can, and I'm going to jump. Oh, no, Roy, not at 70 miles an hour. I can make it. Well, I wish you wouldn't try it, Roy. But if you're going to, we're close enough now. All right, Pat. Hold her steady now. Don't swerve. Here I go. Roy, you made it. You made it. Give her the gun now, Pat. Go past this truck and stop it. And I'll stop Ziggy Carney. Ah, what does that crazy fool in the Jeep want? If he stopped to ask me directions... Hey, you, get that heap of junk out of the road. Yeah, this heap of junk went past you like you were anchored. And if you don't... Oh, like... it's the waiter from the restaurant, huh? Get out of the road before I blast you out. You're blessed nothing, Ziggy, you horse thief. Rogers, where'd you come from? Yeah, you bet you're a horse thief, and we got the goods on you. You've just been insulted twice, Ziggy. Aren't you gonna go for those fancy guns? Well, look, Rogers, uh, I was kidding this afternoon, but you got nothing on me. Oh, no? There are ventilation holes in the top of your truck right behind the cab. That's where you hide the horses you steal. All right, wise guy. Show me your search warrant and then go ahead and unload four tons of furniture. That's the law. Maybe we haven't got a warrant. And maybe we don't need one. My horse is on that van. You think so? Go ahead, find out. You know what steps are necessary. You bet I do, and they're simple. Trigger! Hey, quiet in there, you fool horse. Fool horse, eh? Well, that's more than I can take. Look out, Roy. He's going for his guns. But he's not getting them. Because I'm there first. Let go, Rogers. Pat, <laughs> get these pop guns and then find the yeah. button or switch that'll let down the truck panel. Ha-ha. <laughs> that won't be necessary, Roy. Trigger done it himself. Sorry to let this ref put his hands on your bridle, Trigger. We'll pay him back right now. Steal my horse, will you? And then lie about it. Rogers, don't. Pour it on him, Roy. Don't, don't, don't. I'll give up. I'll tell you where the sheriff's horse is. I'll accept that offer, Ziggy. Ye After you. Wake up. Ooh. Ah, man, he folded like a $2 concertina. He could have had a stop of that search warrant business if Trigger hadn't known what to do when he got the signal. Hand signals, whistle signals. Roy, do you suppose you could teach some of them things to Nellie Bell? Well, sure, Pat, if you'd put in an electronic control system. But I'd rather keep on working with my animals, because they've got the extra something called common sense that makes training them really worthwhile. <laughs> That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Fellows and girls... 
Remember Roy's good advice and ask Mom to bring home Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on the front. You'll love Post Sugar Crisp. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at the same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. Come and get it, come and get it, a quick two-minute energy for work and play. How about Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those Grape Nuts Flakes? They are so good, good for you, too. The two-minute energy works for you, so how about them, how about them, how about Grape Nuts Flakes? Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Look for Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal in the package with Roy Rogers and Trigger on the front. Featured in our cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Herb Vigran, and Ben Weldon. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.